Hi, I'm David Bell. Here's a question for you, the kind of question many Christians fear to ask. How much influence does the story of Adam and Eve actually have today? My answer is a lot, but it's rapidly losing ground. Adam and Eve was a foundation story of Christian thought. Beyond that, it shaped Western thought and culture, art, literature, and even science itself. People who don't know much about the Bible still link the names of Adam and Eve to a story of temptation. For those with a bit more Bible knowledge, there's a sense of astonishment that a story with roots that might go back as far as 7,000 years ago continues to be told and still communicates abiding values and insights. So the world owes a particular debt to those Jewish sages who preserved this story in oral and then written tradition. They didn't see it as their unique Jewish story, even though it's there in the Jewish scriptures, because the Jewish story begins with the call of Abraham, which comes much later on. But they knew it was a universal story of origins. Universal, that is, in the Middle East. The Hebrew tradition saw there was a need to understand Abraham's lineage. The places where his family had come from, the symbolic figures of his own past. Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, and Noah were among them. So the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible in its first ten chapters, recounts not just the story of creation from nothing to everything, but also traces the evolution of family names. But there's a big, big problem with the story of Adam and Eve in chapters 1 to 10, and it's the Christians who've caused the problem. In the last century or so, a growing percentage known as the Christian fundamentalists have tried to make the stories of Genesis into modern scientific facts. Doing so, they've given away the insights of thousands of years of telling a symbolic story by insisting that every word of that ancient story is literally scientifically true. Well, the first Christians, particularly St. Paul, treated the ancient stories with much more respect as did the Christian theologians who came after uh, during what's called the patristic period. Those brilliant minds of the first four or five centuries after Christ read what we call the Old Testament as if it were an allegory full of different types to be interpreted. They didn't treat it as history, but as allegory. St. Paul explicitly says so in Ephesians and actually uses the word allegory. He meant that the meaning is beyond the literal words, a second meaning, and maybe more meanings beyond that again. But there's another reason why I think the Bible is falling out of favour generally, apart from squabbles over interpretation. It's this. Science has generated new truths about our origins. From the very recent discovery of gravity waves to unfolding insights from biology, chemistry, evolution, genetics, geology, physics, many more powerful and deeper insights into human origins have appeared since those oral traditions first were told. Today we can find a tidal wave of scientific information on all those subjects in less than a fraction of a second. Just Google it. But unfortunately, there's a second tsunami of fundamentalist sermons about the book of Genesis. And it's becoming harder and harder to find wisdom about the complementarity of Adam and Eve and evolution. So to help us get going, I've used a play I wrote a long time ago called In the Beginning, Adam and Eve and Evolution. It was specifically written for young people asking questions about science and the Bible. And Act 1 is all about those two creations in Genesis, chapters 1 to 4. Yes, there isn't just one creation story in Genesis. There are two, and they're markedly different.
The first is about the beginning and the days of creation, but the second Genesis to chapter uh, chapter two verse five onward is all about a different creation. It's the much much older story about Adam, the red earth man, and Eve. And if we take Saint Paul at all seriously, we read these Adam and Eve as types. The name Adam conveying the idea of the representative man, every man. And the name Eve conveying the representative woman, every woman. You can learn a lot more about these two creations from the play reading. The complete resource is found only in kiwiconnection.nz. It's in our Genesis and Science group. The public links to that are in the About section of this video. Thanks for watching and see you next week when we look at the temptation.